they won't get away, brothers and sisters. I'm going to say that again, all the evil enemies out there that's done wrong to you, that's done harm to you, that's treated you bad, that's done some wickedness to your life. They're not going to get away. Somebody hit that like button right now and somebody put down in the comment section below, my enemies won't get away. Somebody put that down right now. See, I'm going to show you something inside of this message here, brothers and sisters. I'm going to show you the truth. And the truth is a lot of people think in their minds that they're going to get away with all the wickedness because it happened five years ago, 10 years ago. I want you to know something right now. Return to the sender. Don't have an expiration date on it. No, it don't, brothers and sisters. Somebody put down in the comment section below, return to the sender. It's going to be return to the sender. See, a lot of times people have a problem with a message like this because they're the ones putting out evil and wickedness and they don't want things to come back to their life. No, brothers and sisters, they want to hurt you, harm you, betray you, do wickedness to you and just get away with it and go on by their lives. I'm here to tell you something right now. We serve a mighty God that's going to bring accountability to these enemies. See, the enemies are running from accountability. They get upset and mad and they want to say that God is all love, 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 which God is love, by the way. But God is also a man of war. Somebody put down in the comment section below, God is a man of war. Yes, brothers and sisters, God is a man of war and God don't play when it come down to your life. I'm going to say it again. God don't play about you. Mm -hmm. No, God don't play about you. See, they thought they can snake you out. They thought they can treat you any kind of way. And they thought that life was just going to go on. No, life don't go on, baby. See, God's going to pay your enemies a visit. And I'm going to show you proof that God's going to pay your enemies a visit. But what I want to do is show you the levels of what God want you to do, brothers and sisters, so you can stay righteous. OK, I want to take you to Ezekiel 318. And this knocks out the conversation from all of these people out here talking about um, don't tell the wicked uh, to be righteous and don't tell the wicked to do good. This scripture right here shows you to warn the wicked. Amen. If you don't warn the wicked, their blood is going to be on your hands. I'm going to say it again. You've been doing the right thing, brothers and sisters, by telling these people to keep God's laws, statutes and commandments, by telling these pe uh, people to be righteous under God's law. You've been doing the right thing. Amen. God has been rewarding you for doing the right thing. What the enemy want you to do, the enemy wants you to stop doing the right thing and start doing the wrong thing. Let's go to Ezekiel 3.18. This is what we must do. This is what we should do. OK, to gain favor. All right. From God, we should warn the wicked. Somebody put that down there right now. Somebody put down warn the wicked. Uh, Ezekiel 3.18 says this. When I say unto the wicked, thou shall surely die and thou give him not warning nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hands. See, brothers and sisters, you're doing this to save the enemy's life. Yes, yes, they're saying that you're judging them. You're doing all of these things by ten, telling them to do right, but you're really saving their life. Somebody put down in the comment section below, I'm trying to save the enemy's life. Somebody put that down right now. See, that's love. Amen. When the Bible tells you to love your enemies, that's love right there, brothers and sisters. You are loving the enemy. See, some people think that of the love of the enemy is just to hug them, kiss them and bring them close to you. No, brothers and sisters, when you give the enemy correction, you are showing love to the enemy the same way God gives us correction, brothers and sisters. If God didn't correct us, amen, God would not show a form of love to us. See, some people, um, they don't understand the true love of God. See, God is correction. Amen. And some people only want one small part of God. Some people only want just the love and embracing part of God. But when it comes down to the judgment of God, the people start to disappear because they don't want to deal with the truth of God. See, when God corrects you, God corrects you out of love. That's love as well. Come on now. Let's keep going. And then it says this. You are saving the enemy's life. You're doing something special when you warn the wicked brothers and sisters. OK, understand that. All right. So to start off from the very beginning, we must do what we must warn the wicked. We must tell them their sins. We must tell them the iniquity that they're in. Why? Because it's going to help save their life. If we don't do this, their blood will be on our hand. Oh, man, I'm going to say this again. 
If you don't do it, if you don't do your job, brothers and sisters, the enemy's blood will be on our hand. And we don't want the enemy's blood on our hand. Why? Because we know better. Somebody hit that like button right now. If you know better, mm -hmm, we know better, brothers and sisters. Why? Because we're cut from a different cloth. Why? Because we are obedient. We are the example. We are the leader. See, understand something about Christ. Christ saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of the people doing wickedness in the temple. Christ went in there and smacked the table over. Why? Because Christ knew better. Oh my goodness gracious. Somebody hit that like button right now. If you understand where your brother is coming from, when you know better, you do better. Come on, let's keep on going with the word of God. See, in other words, God is saying, as long as you know better, you will do better. Warn the wicked. That's step one. We must warn the wicked. Now, after we warn the wicked, we're going to go to Galatians 6, 7. And inside of Galatians 6, 7, I'm here to tell you right now that there's a lot of people that think that God is a joke in a game and they think that they can mock the most high God. Okay. God is about returning to the sender. What you put out in this world, you will get back. If you put out good, you will get back good. If you put out love and support, you will get back love and support. If you put out hate, jealousy, envy, wickedness all across the world, that's what's going to come back in your life. Amen. So let me show you proof of this, right? Somebody put down return to the sender. Amen. Inside of the comment section below. Don't be afraid, brothers and sisters. Right. The Bible tells you this. This is Galatians 6, 7. And it says this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Return to the sender. Whatever you put out there, you will reap. Amen. This is basic, brothers and sisters, but we got to give it to the enemy and show them whatever you do, amen, whatever you put out there, it will come back in this world. So if you want good done unto you, do good unto others. Oh man, that's powerful. Do good to people in the world and good will come back to you. You won't have to face the wrath of God. The truth of the matter is there's a lot of people out there that's doing wickedness and they think that God is not going to send the wrath back. That's why God told you in Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Amen. God is not mocked. The most high God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is not mocked. And he says this, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. So whatever you sow out there, you're going to reap back. Now, I want to break down another powerful scripture, right? And this is Genesis 4, and we're going to talk about Cain and Abel. Amen. I want to talk about Cain and Abel because Cain was a jealous brother. Cain was a jealous enemy, and Cain had the spirit of Satan in him. Amen. And I'm going to show you the spirit that Cain had inside of his soul. Once you see the jealousy of Cain, it was based off of the sacrifice that Abel gave. He was jealous of the sacrifice and he was jealous of the favor that Abel got from God. Let's go ahead and go there to the uh, scripture. We're going to go to Genesis 4.1. It says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, right? And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offspring unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Brothers and sisters, the reason the Most High God had respect for Abel's offering versus Cain's offering is Abel gave his firstling, meaning he gave the first of the sheep, brothers and sisters. Amen. Cain did not give the first. He gave selfishly. Amen. He gave selfish. He's a selfish heart spirit person. That's who Cain was. Okay. He gave God the fruit that was on the ground. Amen. He did not give his first fruits. When I tell you this story, brothers and sisters, I want you to get an idea. And I try to give a visual of Cain and how he did it. When you go to a grocery store and you look at the fruits and you look at the vegetables, you will look at the ones and you'll see if he got spots on it. You'll see if he got holes in it. Okay. Cain gathered up the ones that nobody wanted and he gave it to God. 
And God respected Abel's sacrifice. Understand that God respects the ones who give his first fruits. That's why they, that's what uh, God respected with the children of the uh, of Israel. When you give your first, that's what God required. And that's what he respected. OK, so I wanted to break that down to give you an understanding of, yes, Cain gave a sacrifice, but his sacrifice was a selfish sacrifice. Abel gave from the heart. Abel gave of love from God and God knows the heart and God knows the spirit. OK, now let's keep going. So it says this, it says, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. The most I had no respect for Cain and Cain was very rough, meaning Cain was very angry and his continuance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thou continuance falling? If thou, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall his desire, and thou shall rule over him. Now, listen to me right now, brothers and sisters. The interesting thing about Genesis 4 is when I studied up on the scripture and I looked up at the scripture, I began to see that Cain never responded to God. Somebody put down in the comment section below, God is a just God. God is righteous. God told Cain, listen, if you give from your heart, if you if you give with uh, love, if you give with um, no, no selfishness, I will bless you too. But Cain never responded to God. Brothers and sisters, Cain had a reprobate mind, just like your enemies. I'm going to say it again. Cain had a reprobate mind, just like your enemies. Cain didn't even respond to God. You want to know what Cain was thinking? How can I get some get back at my brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say it again. Cain had something called displaced aggression. Oh man, I'm going to say it again. Cain had a condition called displaced aggression. Displaced aggression is when you're angry with someone else, but you take it out on the person that's right in front of you. Oh my goodness gracious. Listen, that's confirmation for everybody right now. Your enemies have displaced aggression. See, they're really mad at God because God chose you and God put you in purpose, but you are the closest thing to Christ. You are the closest thing to the most high God. They can't get to God. So what do they do? They attack the body of Christ. Your enemies have displaced aggression. Somebody put down in the comment section below. My enemies have displaced aggression. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. See, listen to me right now, brothers and sisters. Cain had displaced aggression. So this is what Cain said to Abel. After he did not even answer God, he said this. This is a Genesis 4, 8. It says this and Cain talk with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother and slew him. See, understand this, brothers and sisters. Cain didn't even give Abel a warning that he was about to slew. him. Amen. Cain didn't even give Abel a warning that he was about to destroy him. He just rose up against him. He said, hey, brother, come out to this field. Brother went out to the field and he destroyed Abel. See, brothers and sisters, what you got to understand about this story here is don't ever go nowhere with the enemy. Amen. Don't go out to the club with them. Don't go out to the field with them. Don't go hang out in their home. If they're inviting you in their home, they're doing witchcraft, voodoo, and all kind of demonic spells. Don't go nowhere with the enemy because the enemy is plotting on you. Somebody put down in the comment section below, the enemy's plotting on me. Understand that the enemy's plotting every second and every day against your life, brothers and sisters. I'm going to keep going. And it says this. And we're going to go to the next scripture here, right? And it says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Right then and there, brothers and sisters, he lied. He told the Most High God he didn't even know where, um, where uh, Abel was at. And it says this. And Genesis 10 said, and he said, what has thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And thou art cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So the most high God cursed Cain, just like he cursed your enemies, brothers and sisters. And it says this, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength a fugitive and vagabond shall thou be in the earth brothers and sisters your enemies are fugitives and vagabonds that's what they are on this earth amen let's keep on going and Cain said unto the Lord my punishment is greater than I can bear 
Imagine this, brothers and sisters. Cain just destroyed his brother, slew um, Abel, took him off the face of this earth. Now he's telling the Most High God, listen, this punishment that you're giving me is too great. It's too great that I can bear. And this is what the Most High said. He said, behold, has driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from the face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, therefore, whosoever slave king, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Amen. And the Lord set a mark up on Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Listen to me right now, brothers and sisters. Now, I did my studying and research because I said this. I said, most high, why would you not want someone to return to the sender immediately to Cain? And as you begin to do your research over the scriptures, you begin to see that God allowed Cain to have generations after him. He allowed Cain to have a bloodline. Understand that God was using this to his advantage to prove a point to Cain. Amen. When I say that return to the sender, don't have an expiration date on it. God allowed Cain's seed to grow in this world. That way, in the end, God will wipe them all out. See, understand something. Cain's seed was perverted from the watcher's children. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Cain's seeds, right, was the ones who slept with the Nephilim. Okay. And they were being destroyed and persecuted. Understand that God chose Noah, which was a righteous seed. Noah's father was Seth. Who was Seth? Seth was Cain and Abel's brother. See, Seth came after Cain and Abel. Amen. And Noah came through the bloodline of Seth. So the Most High had another righteous bloodline come in this earth. And here's what ended up happening, brothers and sisters. The Most High got vengeance back on Cain in old age. I'm going to show you proof through that. We're going to go to Jubilee, right? And we're going to go to chapter four. And I'm going to take you to chapter four. And we're going to go to chapter four. Uh, we're going to start at 31. All right. It says this at the close of this jubilee, Cain was killed after him in the year in the same year for his house fell on him and he died in the midst of his house and he was killed by its stones for with the stone he had killed Abel. And by a stone, he was killed in righteous judgment. For this is the reason it was ordained on the heavenly tablets with the instrument in which a man kills his neighbor with the same. He will be killed after the manner that he wounded him in like manner. They will deal with him. Somebody put down in the comment section below. Return to the sender. Cain was destroyed with the same instrument. With the same tool that he used to slay Abel, because Genesis four never tells you what he slayed Abel with. But now we have confirmation right here that it was a stone that he hit Abel with. All right, brothers and sisters, Cain was a murderer from the very beginning and it was returned back to him. The most high allowed generation, right, to be sent out from Cain. For a purpose and for a reason. But in the end, the same stones that were sent out to destroy Abel was sent out upon Cain's head. Understand that this is real. Return to the sender is real. Karma has no expiration date on the brothers and sisters. And understand when I'm telling you this message and I'm giving you this clear, the most high won't let your enemies get away with what they've done to you. Whatever the enemy has done to you, it will be sent back to them if they don't repent. All of your enemies must repent for how they treated you.